It's a very good afternoon to you all. Uh, I feel really privileged uh, being here amongst people who are devoting their lives to the children of this country. Uh, it's, uh, it's, you know, it is something that's very close to me and my heart because of certain experiences I've had in my life. Education is empowerment. Education will get you, uh, you know, to be able to understand yourself and to understand life and to move on in life. So I think the basic requirement for every child is education. And I had a very lovely experience in my life. He was a little young boy who came to me and my wife when he was in class two. And his father said, uh, he asked you know, my wife to teach him English because he had got uh, into an English medium school and uh, they wanted the boy to have some tuition and they couldn't afford it. And the boy, well, he came to my wife and, uh, you know, he was, he was pretty good at English already. So uh, my wife, Rina, she couldn't, um, she obviously couldn't say no. So she got into it and started teaching the boy. Started with a couple of hours every three days a week. And within about four or five months, he started coming every day. And since then, you know, it was, it was a bit of an irritant in my life that whenever I wanted to do anything, whether we have to go out for lunch or whether we have to go out for a holiday, uh, my wife would say, no, no, we can't go because Vikash is coming. And I said, oh gosh, Vikash is coming. For God's sake, stop it. Get him a tutor, you know, get him a tutor. I'll pay for the tutor, I can afford it. But uh, she said, no, 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 don't worry. He'll you know, automatically stop after a couple of days. But that didn't happen. And the boy was very conscientious. He was uh, very endearing. And he kept coming. And slowly, we got very close to each other. And eventually, he started living with us. Although we didn't adopt him, but uh, because he had his own parents. And he would stay the whole day with us, and then go and spend the night with his parents. Very poor. So he had a, a dual life with us. He was, you know, the cast dal, if you, if you look at it like that. And with, in the evenings, he'd go home and have that dal bhat, alu, shiddo, or whatever. And it carried on, and he, he was obviously very intelligent. Uh, and he kept doing better and better and better. Eventually, to cut a long story short, it was a bit of a tightrope walk for me because, you know, I, I made sure that it stayed out of the press till he was of age. And uh, eventually he passed out from uh, IIM Calcutta and he became now he's, <laughs> now he's vice president finance in a, you know, a Swiss company. And, uh, so I had this particular very fortunate experience uh, with Vikas and three or four other boys. Uh, there is one more who is now in PG who is uh, doing super speciality as a gastroenterologist. So uh, there are three or four boys that we had the great fortune of being associated with and very, very intelligent young people. So, uh, you know, what I've learned is most of us when we are going along the road and I see a street young boy come and wants to sell me a newspaper and we, we brush him aside as, you know, as, as an urchin. We brush him aside as somebody who is undesirable. Oh God, he's so dirty. God, he's, uh, you know, he, he'll steal or he'll do something. Uh, we have a, a general aversion uh, which is undescribable and I cannot understand why. Because he's a child, after all, he's 10 years, 11 years, 12 years. And if given the opportunity, it's been proven by my experience that if you pick up a boy from the street who's selling that newspaper, and you give him the opportunity of your son, or the opportunity that your son had or has, honestly, he probably do much better than your, your natural born son can do. So it's all about opportunity. And it's all about education, and it's all about giving a little bit of love and care. So, what Tri is endeavoring to do is on a large scale, two and a half lakh students, two and a half lakh children will benefit. I have a little place on the river, just outside Calcutta. 
it's in a village, and in that village I see when I go there, whenever as often as I can, I see young boys uh, not going to school, and for lots of reasons as stated, they uh, they're just hanging around and uh, they're getting into drugs, they're getting into whatever. They they go and work uh, in, as a you know, and as somebody in a zari factory, the saris that we buy here are all done by child labor. I see it every day. There's a little hutman kind of thing where about 20 little children are doing zari work. They earn maybe if, if they work 12 hours, a little child earns about 150 to 200 rupees in the day. And then, unfortunately, um, some of those little boys I see smoking and drinking, uh, and that's Calcutta. Uh, it's just outside that. So uh, really, it's, it's something which is heart-wrenching to see. No matter what I feel, what I do, what I say, it doesn't work. So obviously, an endeavor such as this, which is very structured, which uh, has got very motivated young people working at it, devoting their lives for it, is highly commendable. And I feel really privileged to be associated in whatever little way that I from now and in the future, I am thankful to it. And I hope and pray that this endeavor reaches uh, its uh, culmination and fruition. And of course, this young man next to me is an inspiration. Uh, I was talking to him, and uh, really, he's extraordinary because it's not normal that you'll meet people like him who are that way inclined. Uh, he's, a, he's an adventurer, but he's got his heart in the right place. He believes in the environment, he believes in self-sustaining life, he believes in frugal life, uh, and he believes in helping other young children to be able to, you know, actually achieve their goals in life. So, hats off to him, and I hope that he has a great, uh, great journey, and that his association with Kai also uh, will take everything forward. Thank you very much.